So, um, in previous class, seen uh, event binding. So now we are clear that. Um, so if we want to communicate between component template, we use a property binding, and if you want to communicate between template to component, we use event binding. So event binding is done through. Uh, um, curly braces and component to template is square braces and if we want to do a two-way binding then we'll be using we will be using not now but we'll be using this pattern to communicate uh, between component template and template to component using the same model property okay now so before we actually go into two-way binding right let's see one more stuff here so which is called as a template referencing now let's see what is template referencing so um, let's take a simple example of input. Let's say I have a text type and maybe I'll just take a value of uh, sample text. This is my input, right? So, so this is a plain simple HTML we created for input. And now if you see the value, it will be like sample text here. Right, so maybe just to look better, let me just place it uh, top of button. Maybe a quick break. So I have a sample text and click me. Okay, click me is a button. Now, so uh, in this text, right, so this input text, which is a control here we can have the complete referencing of this element, right? Whatever data is actually changing, we can actually send from template to component in different way called template referencing. Now, how to do that? Now, let me create uh, a new button. Let's say, so this one, let me call it as a something sample click. So here, let's take, now let's see the binding. So again, I'm gonna bind the click event to a new function. Let's say I wanna say uh, read text for instance. So this is my simple function I have. So let's create the same function in my component. Let's say I'm going to call it as a read text. So I just gave a simple uh, function now. This we already have seen, but let's improve once we have this. So let's say here, this is sample text. Right. So now we have binded this read text to the template. Uh, for uh, to button element with a click event here. So whenever we click on the sample click, it does call this read text and read text will actually print some console, right? So that's how uh, this is. I mean, if I go to dev tools here, click on sample click. If I go to console, you'll see this is sample text. Now, so now what my, my main theme here is when I click on any button, I want to actually get the text of my input box whatever i enter and then i want to uh, um, you know communicate that to component so that it can uh, you know uh, show it in my console right so let's let's see how we can actually do that so now whenever we actually use an event we can actually pass the reference of a complete element itself now how can we do that so whenever we have an event binding it does provide something called a dollar event Right? Or we can also pass a complete reference as we are talking about the referencing or passing a reference from template to component, we can actually refer. So any element, uh, we can actually re refer to element in different ways. And one of the way is providing an unique ID. So now how can we provide unique ID? We have seen this part in previous class called hash. Let's say this is my input text for instance right so this is the unique referencing id which we have for input element now i can actually pass this my input text right to the um, uh, function which we have created so i can just say my input text as a parameter value here. 
Now the same stuff let me take within the function. Let's say here I'm going to pass, let's say I'm going to say uh, element for instance, ELE, which is element. Now we are actually passing input the ID of an input, which means this is going to pass everything as such. Let's let's just print whatever is coming up. Let me just print this element as is. And let's see what exactly we're going to get, right? I'm just printing the same element property. Um, um, uh, argument, whatever we're actually passing from here. And then we're just printing it. Now let's go back to browser. And uh, let me just delete all the breakpoints. We don't need any breakpoints now. Remove all the points. Go back to console. Okay. So now, so the value is this is this is the input and this is a sample. Click click on it. Now, if you see here, right, this is going to actually give the complete input. So this is a input element which we passed. Can you see this one? So this have a unique identifier. Whenever you actually mention it to hash, Angular understands that okay, this is a unique identifier. This identifier for of this element in current context of page and we are actually passing a complete element here now in this element we have a value also right so what we're gonna do we're gonna read now a value so i can say element dot value for instance now this will automatically read whatever is provided within this input now let's go back to browser again so now i have sample text click on it now you can see it's a sample text i can change something here new text here for instance click on it you can see new text so here what we are doing is we are actually passing um, a reference of an element to component and from the component we are trying to read the elements different properties we have so this is something which is called as a template referencing in angular right so end of the day the main theme which we have to understand is we can actually provide a reference to any element we have using hash and the uh, value which is kind of a reference as an ID and you can actually use the same ID to pass on to the uh, to the component using the event binding clear now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so now so with this right we now we understand what is what at least we have a feel of what exactly is going on uh, how so what is that uh, called hash some my what is that called so this is a unique reference for this reference okay. yeah for this element which we are providing so that no, I can actually understand. See, if you use a normal HTML and provide a hash, it doesn't understand. As this template is actually rendered on top of a component, which is an Angular component, it does understand whenever it is actually rendering, right? It does understand. So now, now let me go back to the browser and let's go to this element, HTML element. Let me show you. See, if you see this HTML element, that unique referencing is, is not even available here. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So that is only for the internal referencing in that context of HTML elements, which we can use that across any of the event binding we need. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what we have here. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So now let's go into the next step of two way binding. So till now, whatever we have seen, right, is kind of a one way binding, right? One way binding, or I would say like, um, um, it was like communication between like one uh, in a, a single direction communication from component template or a template to component. Now let's see how we can actually achieve something called two-way binding. A step forward. Now, when we talk about two-way binding, we are talking about component to template and template to component. Now, so we know that in order to talk to component to template, we have to use square braces, which is property binding. Template to component is. Um, um, we have a, a, a curly braces, which is a event binding. Now, let's see how we can actually use from the same property of two-way binding. So let me create something here. So let's create a new text. So let me give some BRs here so that I can use the space for new element. So now let's create a simple input. Let me call it type as text. And let me take a simple property. Let me create a simple property first. 
Now in this component, I'm going to create a property called public, let's say my data and I'm going to initialize to blank and this my data, I'm going to directly interpolate here. So we know that what is interpolation, right? Yeah. So here I'm going to say my data. So <laughs> when I'm actually using interpolation, which means whatever property or whatever value changes uh, to this property, it's going to bind or it's going to render the value of that property in the uh, in the area where we are actually interpolating that property. That we know, right? Now my in this in this input, which is a new input created. Now let's see how we can actually bind the same property, right? The theme here is I don't want to create a separate you know channel for input and and then whenever it updates, get back to here and then update this property and then show the changes. No, the same property, what we're going to do, we are going to bind it to input also. So how can I bind? Now here, we are going to use something called two-way binding. So in order to use that, we, we use something called ng model. ng model and say it as my data. So now it is binded here. So this my data is binded in bidirectional, which means if I change something in my input, it's going to change the property value here. And whenever this property value is changed in component, it's, go it's going to automatically affect in my element here. And so when it is changing, evidently, as we are actually binding that again, it's going to change again because it's a unidirectional binding we have. Let's see it in action. So let's go back here. Let me just close this. So any issue? Yeah, nah, that's fine. Let, let the issue come. I think we'll understand what it is. So let's go to uh, development, development tools. Now you can see here, it says that I cannot bind ng model since it is or it isn't a known property. So now ng model is something which is kind of a new and it doesn't understand what exactly is ng model because the component or the imports which we have already provided right doesn't have any reference to this now so um, in our app module what we have to do is because uh, we have to provide the referencing for it and that referencing is a forms binding okay Excuse me. Sorry. So now what we're going to do, we're going to import, let's say, I want to import. So now what we're going to do, so we have discussed this imports, if you remember. So these are the imports which are kind of a common, commonly applied or commonly exposed or commonly available or accessible to all the components which you are actually binding with this current module. Right. So what I'm going to do, I want one of this module, which is from Angular Forms. So Angular Forms, right? So which is called as my Forms module. And then I'm going to expose this to components I have. Now with this, what happens is whatever. So now, anyways, we are going to talk about forms in a great, I mean, in a in a very um, elaborative uh, sessions in future. But end of the day, as we are actually using ng ng model here, so ng model is something which comes or um, um, is a part of a forms model here. So now, once we go back to this component, which is ng model here, let's see if compilation is successful. So let's save this. So compilation successful. Go back here. Now you can see it does understand what is what is ng model, right? So this is how now now we understand what is this imports, right? Now I didn't actually give anything which is specific to this component, but I just imported something which is in imports of my ng module, and this actually got exposed to 
one of the component which is already binded called part 2 component and I'm in part 2 component and in part 2 components HTML I'm actually using ng model now whenever my uh, uh, um, 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 build runs right when it actually converts every element it has now it understands what is ng model and if you go back here to this element now it, it does say that yeah I understand what is um, model here right and it, it, it actually converts to specific angular binding so now let's say I'm gonna write something see so when I type something it starts giving me the data right so which means what is happening three different things are happening here now I'm changing my value in here when I change this is binded to the component here as this property changes it's indirectly changing the value here also right so now you can see that this is happening in bidirectional it changes from component to sorry template to the component and from component as it's actually changed it, it it directly hits back to component again now let's do one more action here so let's take one more input let's say i'm going to have one more input here and it is taking the same model now what should happen here all the data whatever wherever i change anything as i'm actually binding to the single property everywhere it should be in consistent mode right so initially let's say i'm gonna just give it as uh, like it's blank something now if i go back to the so can you see here it says it's blank mm -hmm. it, it came from component mm -hmm. And even this came from component and this came from component. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove this. Say some value. Can you see here? What happens? It changes in my uh, component. Component value is updated here. And again, it is also updated in this input. Now let me change from here. Here is it. So what is happening? So this is, this, is a, this, this is something which is like a strong binding we have. Like right? where the data will always be consistent when you actually bind it to various elements you have or various properties you are actually do it in here clear uh no uh, i'm still yeah that's fine uh you want me to explain again i can do that yeah. so, fine. like uh, how they are linked i'm checking uh, i couldn't understand no problem. so now let's 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 get one by one now mm -hmm. we have this my data property defined right yeah forget about inputs and everything don't, don't so do it's that. in a it's in which component part two component it's a, we have only one component forget about everything i just i'm working only in part two component here mm -hmm. and in part two component i have a simple property called my data and this property is binded okay. is binded to my data here right Binded to text box. Uh, no, 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 forget about okay. inputs. For now, just forget about inputs. I, let's say I don't okay. have anything. I have nothing here. Let's say I have nothing. Okay. Here. Let's okay. understand one by one, okay? okay. Now, now, do you understand this property? Forget about, I'm not using anything else. I'm just saying only this part, okay? Mm -hmm. I just have one property. Forget about whatever we have done till now. There is nothing, okay? Mm -hmm. In this component, I have just one property. And this property is binded to is binded to the specific uh, specific template HTML through a interpolation binding. Yeah, that I understand. Yeah. Now, now, when I change some value here, what happens to this uh, element? It will change. Yeah. So you can see here, this mm -hmm. value ch will change. Is it clear? Yeah. Perfect. Now, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a simple input here. Forget about what exactly we're doing. Just I'm um, uh, just follow these simple steps. Let's say I'm gonna provide an input. Now, why I'm taking input? Because I input allows me to change the data, right? Input allows me to change the data in um, HTML. That's why I'm taking input. Okay. So in this input, what I want to do is I want to use the same property to bind it. Let's go one by one. Don't just get confused into uh, everything, okay? Let's say I'm going to say value is equal to model. Sorry, my data. So what happens in this situation? 
Now, what is this value is equal to this uh, my data? If I go back to this, can you see the value? Yeah, whatever is in the, in the my data, it is assigned yes. to the text box. Why? Value. Because we are using a interpolation binding, and it actually binds up here. Are we clear till here? Yeah, yeah, that I got it. Perfect. Now. So instead of binding to value here, what I want to do is now here. Now, if I have this my data and if I change something here, right, if I change something here, I mean, it doesn't it doesn't actually matter because this interpolation binding is a one way binding, which means it updates yeah. only if the property is changed in inside. Yes. The component, right. That's, mm -hmm. that's the only thing there. Now, my intention is whatever is changed or whatever is updated in this input box i want to update the property value also in the component that's my intention right yeah, yeah. in order to achieve that we can't use this instead of use instead of this what we can do is we can use something called two-way binding and how can we use two-way binding it's using our square brackets and parentheses yes yeah. and say ng model okay once what is the table called uh, inside a parenthesis scale? So bucket. this is called as, I mean, I mean, Angular does say that if you don't remember, see, don't, don't worry about what world is saying, okay? Simple thing is, when we want to communicate something between component to HTML, what do we do? We use property binding, right? Mm -hmm. And when, whatever we want to actually uh, do from template to component, what do we use? Even binding. Right? Even when, yeah. <coughs> are, are you clear on these two at least? Yeah. Component to uh, HTML is property binding. HTML to component is event binding. So <laughs> combining these two will actually give bidirectional. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's what is there. So in in uh, now now if you talk about the Angular team, what it says they normally call. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. So they normally call banana in in a box or a bin. That's what they that's what they normally call. Mm -hmm. Okay. So inside this, whatever you actually provide, it's gonna do a bidirectional binding. So now what I'm doing, I'm actually using the same Angular and the property binding and event binding. And what is the event I'm actually using? It's ng model, right? And this ng model is Whenever I actually provide any property, it's going to have a bidirection. So when I say my data here, now it's going to take this property of a component and it binds to this input and says, okay, fine. Whatever I change, right, it's going to even update my data property. And my data property is in this component, this value changes. And indirectly, when this value changes, as we're actually binding here, even this changes. Okay. <laughs> So now that's how if I change something here, now this is going to update. So this is the key here. Okay. If you want to bind something which is a property to the element where you want to take back the value also, then just create a two-way binding. And then that's going to update in both the directions. So now you can use this property anywhere, right? Everywhere you can actually use any number of places in the same or even the ch child or connected components, it's going to maintain the same value based on how you are actually providing the binding. Okay. Okay. Now I got it. Yeah. Okay. Clear. So that I think that's how that's how we normally actually do a two-way binding. So this is the ba base we have for for, for 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 I would say like everything. Now, this can be used across. Uh, anything you, you can actually use object to bind right object data to bind you can actually use as we go to the next step Right, side we're gonna talk about some uh, uh, structural uh, uh, bindings mainly like uh, we're gonna talk if conditions switch conditions and uh, for loops and all there you will actually see more of this okay end of the day when you change something it has it should get affected based on a values are actually changing that's how it is